Hi, this is Darla Ledoux. Welcome to Shift the Field TV. Today's topic is why taking time off is a smart business strategy and how to get started. So many entrepreneurs are overworking or worse, they're sitting at their laptop thinking about working, opening different windows and not sure where to get started. I know I have been there. Or maybe they're pushing through to hit a deadline and just one more thing, right? That one more email. They're not even realizing that the email's being written from an energy that like couldn't possibly convert. There's three reasons taking time off is a smart business strategy. And I'm gonna give you three ways to get started, even if you're a little bit skeptical that it can work for you. Number one, a tired leader is not a helpful leader. You might, like I said, write from a funky energy or maybe you get irritated with a team member. You make rushed decisions without stopping to tune in to what you really know intuitively to be true just to get it done. You might experience decision fatigue, lose discernment, etc. I can remember some times where I shot off a message to a team member because I saw their work and I saw it as a mistake and I thought they needed to fix it only to realize it was my mistake and they had actually done it correctly. And by the way, it wasn't even my job to check. That kind of stuff doesn't create a happy environment. The second reason to take time off is you get to see what your team can actually do. I have a team right now that's capable of leading so many things in ownership of what has to happen and in what order. I only got there because of times I knew based on how I was showing up in the world that I needed some time off and some space. I stepped away without properly figuring everything out for everyone, only to discover that they actually figured it all out and they knew what to do. And so now I could transition ownership of things I used to go and assign, now I no longer need to do that because I took time off. So what if your team is capable of more than you realize and stepping away is the best way to discover that? Number three, you need to create space for your magic. Your magic requires space. I believe that the most aligned solution to any business problem you have is accessible to you through your sourced magic. This is your inner guidance and it comes to you in a particular way. And I've identified the six most common paths in our sourced magic quiz, which you can access below this video because it's a little different for each person. But no matter what your magic is, Having space away from sitting and staring at the laptop, trying to get shit done, is going to make a difference. When you create space for your magic, you can tune in and hear what you know that you know that you know about the direction you want to go or the path that's lighting up for you. You're bound to get lit up with creativity from the inside when you create space to hear your magic speaking. Now, I know it can be hard to start taking time off when you're maybe addicted to work or really it feels like things might fall apart without you. And I have absolutely been in that place. So let's take some baby steps to get started. Okay, so the first way to get started is what I'm calling five minute magic. So once you know your sourced magic and the free report you get will give you some tips, but take five minutes to be with it and just see what happens. I know for me, I'm not always the best at making time to meditate. My magic really speaks to me beautifully. If I meditate and breathe and feel my body, I don't always have time for a long session. Five minutes literally shifts my state, reminds me that I have magic and that it's there to guide me, and then I can move about my day, but I'm noticing it more. So can you take five minutes, and morning is best, but I'm not one of those people who's like, 
you must do all of these hacks, right? Doing it in the morning ensures you'll do it. So let me just give you some examples. If your sensation magic, which is you feel it in your body, you might spend five minutes in dancing, in breath work, um, checking your chakras, if that's something that you know about. Possibly put on a song for five minutes and dance in your body and remember that it's magical. It's a magical source of knowing and truth. If you're vibration magic, maybe you're going to journal for five minutes about what's in your field lately, right? If you're vibration magic, whatever's showing up for you is information about how you're vibrating. So begin there and we teach different exercises to use to shift that vibration. Five minutes journaling will make a world of difference because your magic will recognize what needs to shift. If you are expansion magic, you might go somewhere that feels abundant to you. Maybe for you it's nature or maybe it's a luxury mall, but get in the feeling of expansion. If you're expression magic, you might write or create or make art or make music. If you're recognition, pull some cards, some oracle cards and read or look at the picture and, and see what jumps out at you. You may also journal about what's been in your field and start making the connections of the direction you're being drawn or possibly rapid fire engage with different people or even with media or social media and just look at what jumps out at you. Don't spend a lot of time. Five minutes, right? If you're compassion magic, breathe into your heart or even draw a heart on a paper and ask it what it wants. Five minutes. Heart, what do you want right now? Heart, what feels true right now? Another great five-minute exercise for a compassion magician is to do a boundaries assessment. Line down the middle of the paper. What am I available for? What am I not available for? quick little exercise to remember that you get to make space for your magic. Number two, go interact with life. And you might have heard this in the five minute session, but like, don't just sit at your laptop or wherever you work and like plug away and push harder. Go interact with life because your magic, you'll see, feel, and respond to things from your magic that's information for you. Maybe you go out in nature. Maybe you go to a public place and just people watch and, and feel. Maybe you do watch Netflix and see what do you happen to be drawn to and what might that be sharing. You might do a social scroll, an intentional social scroll from a place of what's my magic resonating with rather than from compare and despair. And then tip number three, this is the most important tip, is follow the energy. Make a practice to follow the energy. And again, you can start small, maybe with one decision a day from a place of what energy feels alive to me. Now, if that feels hard for you, come join us at Sourced and we'll help you learn how to shift your energy field and follow what's alive. There's two types of energy, right? There's default energy, which is based on these filters we have for life, the old beliefs and judgments and limitations that we created at a young age that are keeping us seeing the world in a certain way. Your default energy is never going to get you the result you truly want. And so if you're continuing to be the same way you've always been, right, you're not going to get that different result. Whereas we teach our clients how to shift their field and get into what we call sourced energy, which is alive and clear and vibrant and guiding you. If your sourced energy, for example, is fun and play, and you're sitting here ch -ch 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 at your computer, it's like, well, what, what would fun and play do? Fun and play isn't always necessarily going to blow off work, but fun and play is going to find the part of work that feels fun and playful or find a way to do it in a fun and playful way. But your default will never get you what you truly want. I think about when I was an engineer and I became an engineer because I had a belief that I had to be smart to get love. I had a lot of beliefs about working hard and proving myself and giving people what they want and all of this external stuff, right? And so I did all those things and I got promoted. And in my review, when I got promoted, which was the thing I was really working for, I felt this empty pit in my stomach. And it's because I was, yes, I was being rewarded, but I was being rewarded for being 
my default energy. And I didn't know that what that meant at all at the time, but I was being rewarded for something that wasn't aligned with my soul and will never find fulfillment, will never find the gold that way. So for me, when I find myself in a place where I'm forcing my work, I'm pushing past where I lost interest, for example, I'm going to go, what would, whatever my sourced energy words are, do at this time? So for me right now, I'm working creative, fluid, and free. So I would ask myself, what would creative, fluid, and free do right now? Is there a way to make what I'm doing feel creative, fluid, and free? And if so, let's let's do it differently. And if not, we've got to go a different direction because if it's not aligned with my soul's energy that's alive, it's going to feel dead. All right. If we were in a room together, I'd be like, raise your hand if you feel me. So that's what I have. Three reasons to take time off. A tired leader is not a helpful leader. See what your team can do. Make space for your magic. And then three ways to get started. The five-minute magic session. Interact with life, period and follow the energy. I hope this is helpful. I'd love to hear what you're taking away. I'm Darla Ledoux, founder of Sourced and author of Shift the Field, and we'll see you in the next episode.